So, word on the street is that you are trying to learn a little bit about singletons. What's up guys, it's your boy Kilo Loco, and today we're going to get into singletons, how to um, actually start using them, why and how are they different from using static and class members. So a bit of a bit of a disclaimer before we actually get into using singletons and I show you how to implement this. I just want to start off by saying that you know most developers will actually see um, most experienced developers will actually see singletons as being like an anti pattern. They call it anti pattern, right? And the reason that they say that it's an anti pattern, um, or essentially that it's a bad thing, is because what it does is um, a lot of developers end up using it because of the convenience that it provides in your code. Now, um, it's it's a very helpful thing, um, but what it does is it makes your code a little bit harder to understand where that functionality actually lies, like how um, like the dependability of that code is lying somewhere else, and that the fact that that object can that that object can change. Um, so that's a problem. The other problem is that it's very hard to test. So just keeping in mind that singletons do have those setbacks, especially when viewed by other more experienced developers. Now I'm guilty of using singletons a lot. But this year, and you know, I'm going to look into um, changing it up with dependency injection. I'll probably have a video for you guys for that. Um, if you're interested in that, let me know. But without further ado, let's get into it because we're here to learn about singleton. Kyle, just, just, just give it to us, all right? All right, then. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by making a helper class. This is just the standard um, class that you would generally see me make. So let me just go ahead and put that in there for you right now. All right. So as we can see right here, all we have is like a, um, just a, a class called helper. And then we have an initializer with that doesn't take any parameters and there's no code inside the brackets. Right. So, I mean, you could essentially do this, but there's no code in there so that we just we just undo that. And it's just two curly braces close. The reason that we make it private is so that you actually cannot instantiate an instance of the helper class outside of this method. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that you cannot do something like this helper open and close parentheses. That's something that you do not want to do. Essentially, that would take that would take away from you making a singleton because what a singleton essentially is, is just one instance of that object in memory. And there's not supposed to be any other instances of that object. So what we could do um, without having that private initializer is we could say helper, we could say let helper one equals that. And we could say let helper two um, equals that that right so we don't want to have that because these are two different instances that could have different um you know property um property values and things like that so what we want to do for a singleton is that we we actually put this access control pr private keyword right here which means that you cannot initialize um a helper without with this initializer um that doesn't take any arguments just like that because you only have access inside of this class so yeah, I have a video on um, you know access control if you're interested on that. But yeah, anyway, that's something that's very common in in, um, in singletons, and you're probably gonna have it in just about every singleton that you make. The next the next thing that you're gonna see is you're gonna have a static um, a static constant variable, and usually you'll see this like when you're using like um, you'll see it called like shared, you'll see it called current, you'll see it called be called default. Um, don't use default because default is a keyword in Swift that you know is usually used other places, but um, it's just an instance. It's going to be the one single instance, the singleton of. <clears throat> it's going to be the singleton of the um, of the helper class. So it's going to be the one helper that you're actually going to be referring to whenever you use it. So this would I like to go with the word shared. You can call it whatever you want. Call it poop if you want. Hell, it doesn't really matter. So this is our one instance. So now what we can do is we can say helper, let helper, if we were to say hel helper one is equal to helper. And since it's a static, we say shared it, this helper. And if we say let helper two is equal to helper dot shared, 
these are both the same object. It's pointing to the same reference in memory. It's very important that you understand that. So if we say helper one is equal to helper two, I believe we should be getting that true all up in there. But uh, well, you can't you can't really do that because um, you can't really. Let me see if I could do the triple equals. You can't do the double equals just because. Um, it doesn't have the the double equals as a comparison operator um, but the triple equals is saying is this the same object in memory um, are, yeah it's pointing so it's it's saying are these two pointers the same pointing to the same object in memory that's essentially what it's saying so as we can see right here this is true so yeah we know that so far so good we have a singleton object so now what you usually see in a helper is um, well, I mean, you will see um, in a helper is you'll have like a variable maybe. And let's say it's it's holding the state of of whatever this helper um, class is. And the state well, let's just say it's going to be a string called active. So the state of the helper is active, right? So now whenever we do um, helper and we're just going to say helper dot shared dot state, you can see right here that it, it gives you active and that's the awesome thing about singletons is because now anywhere in our anywhere in our code since we're pointing to the same object that's already been initialized it's kind of like working with um kind of like working with a static or a class member so now we could just access this information from anywhere but that that's also a bad thing and we're going to talk we're going to touch on that a little bit towards the end of the video but um let's just keep going uh, next, what we're going to have is we're going to have a we we can have a function, and these are the helper classes. Once again, like if you just kind of ignore this, it just becomes like just a regular class, right? It's you would have your normal variables, your your let your your constants, your variables, your methods, all that stuff would be in there, and that's all essentially it is. It's just saying, oh, there's also an instance of it in here and you can't you know initialize it that's all it's saying so now we're just going to have a, a method in here that's just going to print out what our current active status is so let me do that for you guys all right so now we have our function in here and it's just, all it's going to do is just going to print out this thing when we call it it's going to say helper dot share dot um dot log helper state and all it's going to do is it's going to simply print out this sentence right here the current helper state is and it's going to say active because our state is currently active see so the current helper state is active so now we know that um that we can access it anywhere and now you might be thinking oh well kyle you just did you just did a video on on static and class members like how is this helpful how is this beneficial um where does this differ well let me go ahead and give you guys a static helper um, class um, that looks exactly the same and we can look at it um, and we can start doing some comparisons on how they differ all right so as we see here we have the static helper state class now um, as you can see the only real differences that we're seeing right here is that um, you know we well we would still we would still have this private in here right like you wouldn't want to initialize a static class maybe maybe you would you know that's that's one of the things that's one of the differences maybe you would want to also have other um other variables and stuff in here maybe there are static helpers that you want to use throughout um your code and maybe you just have a couple of different static or class functions or properties in there that you want to use as well um so that's one of the differences is that um you know when you're working with just statics and class members um, you can still have multiple instances of that object that that class object or that struct object right the other difference is that the implementation is different so as you can see right here on line 18 when we want to print out what the current state is um, we actually have to say static helper dot state we can't access the um the state directly because there is no instance of that state so we actually have to say we have to get the static helper and say static helper dot state so that's another difference that we also have now the last thing that they differ in is probably the most important that you understand you don't really have to worry about it too much because most of the time you're, you're not going to end up in a situation where it's going to it's going to really happen but what you really want to do is you want to avoid using 
um, like a static static members on um, resource intensive um, like operations. So this is where singletons really shine um, when compared to static uh, and class members is that when you're using something that's resource intensive intensive and what I mean by that is like if you're using something that's going in the background and doing some stuff up in the cloud going over here to the API saving to the device and doing all these all these like synchronous or, or asynchronous blo um, blocks of code then that's something that you want to have in a singleton because you probably don't want to con continuously create that resource so that's that's one other thing but overall they they almost are essentially the same if you are if you if you're not going to be using anything that's resource intensive like going um doing asynchronous calls and stuff like that then you're probably safe off just using static uh static and class members you'll probably be fine with that because as you can see if we go if we go further down and we start using the um the static helper the static helper dot state and we start doing the static helper um, static helper dot log static helper state you'll see that it's actually less code it's less typing for you to do it this way anyway so that's that's a benefit of that now um, the last thing that I want to go over with you with singletons is that they are class only right you only want to have a singleton class you do not have a singleton struct all right so now we have a struct helper that's built exactly the same way as the um the regular helper right here um at the top so we have this helper and the struct helper exactly the same we just kind of changed up the names you know you know you know <laughs> and let's actually change it right here log struct helper right we're just we're changing up the names just a little bit just for comparison now we don't we don't really need to see this anymore we'll, we'll just comment it out all right guys so now that we have a helper uh, instance of the helper service we um on line 46 and an instance of the struct helper service um on line 50 and i'll also make sure that uh oh i actually forgot to change the struct destruct all right so now that we have an instance of of both of them we can kind of start seeing where the difference is um and as you can see right away we're getting an error that we cannot make this uh we cannot change the state on the struct helper because it is a constant see how we're setting the the class help the class helper to um shared right here with a constant but over here we're doing let struct equal, equal this and um we're using a let right here and now we're getting an error on the struct error when we're trying to change the state and the reason for that is because uh struct helper is a constant and it's a value type and a value type when you want to try to change it what it's going to do it's not going to actually change that that specific value what it's going to do is it's going to make a copy so when you make a copy of a singleton essentially it's not a singleton anymore because you made a copy now there's two of them right so uh just to further show you how this is bad what, what we'll do is we'll just we'll satisfy we'll satisfy xcode we're gonna, we're gonna get you give you what you like xcode and we're gonna say var right already not a singleton but we're gonna just keep playing along right so what we're gonna do is we, we're trying to change the state to an active right on helper and we're trying to change the state to inactive right here on the struct helper now if we do helper dot shared dot state and we run that we get inactive as we would expect because once again all right xcode had crashed on me like this is like the several it's, it's done it several times now anyway um helper is um is inactive as we would as we would expect because we're pointing to that we're saying hey change this to inactive right so now going down to the struct helper if we say struct helper we're getting the the main actual object struct helper the shared instance of it and we say state and if we run that if we run that and xcode doesn't crash on us notice that we get active that's a huge difference so that so now you think that okay i have this 
I have this helper right here, the struct helper, and I'm changing the state so everything should be good because in my code I said I, I said it, and now when I want to reference the struct helper again, what happens is that it never changed because you're pointing to the original, right? You're pointing to that original singleton, um, and that that will never really change because we we made an instance of this we made an instance of that singleton and essentially made a copy of it when we when we try to modify it so that's why you can't have struct helpers or not struct uh, struct singletons because it just doesn't exist you you're essentially just making a copy therefore it's not a singleton so um that's pretty much it guys uh, once again you're gonna want to use singletons only if you have like um, sorry for the background noise um, you're only gonna want to use singletons if you're doing resource intensive stuff um, once again it's considered an anti-pattern by um, higher level developers and and that's because you're bringing you're you're using the convenience of it as opposed to doing it with like something like dependency injection where all the code you can kind of see where that's coming from and it 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 removes the it removes the the ease of writing tests for your code so just keep that in mind but once again um only use singletons if if you can't use static because it's resource intensive and then always make sure that your singleton is the class so that's it guys my name is kilo loco um, if you like the video if you found it helpful make sure you give it a thumbs up and tell me what your thoughts are on um, on singletons whether you plan on using them in your code or, or if you think that they're just something that should be completely avoided and i shouldn't have even taught this video secondly um, reach out to me on Twitter because if you have any questions about your, um, you know, any problems in your code, um, even on, um, even on, uh, like, why is this the best way or what, what about this, Kyle? What about that? Um, on different topics, then Twitter's the best place to reach me. Lastly, if you want to just kind of see what's going on in my, in my day to day life, um, check me out on Instagram and, um, you know, that's where you can find out what's going on with day to day Kilo Loco. So, yeah, I hope that you guys like the tutorial. Hope you guys have a better understanding of singletons, how they differ from, um, you know, static and class members, and, um, you know, kind of have a better idea of whether or not you're going to use them in your project. So, thanks again, guys. Have a great rest of the day, and as always, keep coding passionately.